Hello everyone, it's Yintan here, and welcome to another Fleet PvP video. Here I'm going to be analysing some footage of myself FCing and trying to break down the decision process that I'm using in the hopes that maybe people who are watching this can be inspired to try and FC for themselves or at least just get a better understanding of how the mechanics of EVE really work on a larger scale. And this time the footage that we're looking at directly relates to the last Fleet PvP video that I put out where I was using Pulse Gnosis's as just at the start of that engagement you saw me kill a guy called Gertie in a carrier and it turns out that that guy is actually another Spectre FC and as a result of uh, me killing him in space whilst he was out looking for some solo roaming action we ended up deciding to have an honourable brawl to settle this little quote unquote difference between us. Because of this, unlike normal, there's not a huge amount of context that really needs to be explained for this fight. We both decided on our system to meet up in, BWF, and we both headed there with our respective fleets, which we'd made sure were roughly evenly sized. With myself heading up a fleet of 19 Malas, 5 Executors, 2 Hyenas, and 5 Punishers, whilst Gertie brought along a fleet of 14 Mowers, 7 Scythes, 2 Scimitars, 2 Slepners, and 2 Hyenas. So let's just jump right into the fight here and see how things play out. Brace, especially logistics, especially logistics. Okay, what range are we loading in at? We're loading in at medium. Okay, multi, um, load multi-freak. Scan res scripts out. Anchor up on Jin now. Let's get ready to go. Primary is going to be EIR. EIR. We have a side that has broken formation. Secondary will be Ryan Cal. Scan res damps out. Scan res damps out. So here, very early on in the fight, we're presented with a huge opportunity, as a number of Gertie's scythes haven't used their MWD to keep up with the main anchor. And if we're able to lock them in this position whilst the anchor moves away, this will force Gertie to choose between sacrificing these lockdown scythes or keeping the rest of his fleet out of the range of our DPS. Swap to Ryan now, swap to Ryan now, swap to Ryan now. Ryan, Cal, Scr uh, d uh, set, uh, Punishers even, get on top of these scythes, lock them down. On it. Secondary will be Mr. Shusu. Mr. Shusu is now primary. Double webbed. After that, we're going to go on... This scythe. What are we doing? We're holding for now. Part of my speech got cut off by the recording there, but what I was doing is I was asking our anchor if we were holding or not. And that's a very important piece of information that you should be consistently asking your Logi FC to update you on throughout a fight, as it should determine how aggressive or defensive you want to play your positioning from that point forwards. Switch to mid-range ammo, so standard on this scythe, standard on this scythe. Then on ear again. Cut in between their logi here, you're doing great. Minus one logi. Okay. I got an Atron uh, webbing and scramming me. Okay, who's that? Rana, it's the uh, now on Jack. PC8. Logi, get the hyena, okay. please. Jack, that was crashing me. Too. Trying to hold as much. Make sure you got your ABs on, by the way, guys. Make sure you're spreading those damps still. Make sure you're spreading those damps on the Logi. We're going to continue to burn through them here, guys. Drones out. Make sure we've got those on Logi. Going to take out their Logi before they can take out ours. Good job. Now we're going to go on to Walter. You should be with mid-range ammo. You should still be hitting him out to this range, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. Through. Nice, nicely done. Okay, now we're going to go into premise lab. DPS. If 
fucking Slepnis. This is such cowardice. <laughs> Whack. They're probably going to survive because of that. That's fine. Are those Tech 2 Lodges I see? I think they are. <laughs> I don't mind. We're still beating them. So Next target? <laughs> Next target will be Zarlo Varlox. After that, we're going to go on Tawa. By the way, good job the two frigates that have just been holding down Tawa for this whole fight completely out of fucking range of doing anything. You're down to two and a half logic. Knock me as well. Tawa is now primary. I should be. Let's keep taking this seriously, guys. You're doing well. Can somebody murder Jamar Denimar in the scythe? I've been poking. Thank you. Keep spreading those damps on your logi. Just keep them going. Pretty soon we're going to hit critical mass and we'll be able to switch onto these mowers. Okay, now onto Jamar. After that, we're going to go on the cowbell. So now with only two logistics remaining actually involved in the fight and all of our damps concentrated on those two ships, effectively rendering them useless, I decide to move over and start whittling down on DPS. Cowbell is now primary. We're going to be in range for multi-freak, so switch back to there. Bless one logi. Bless one logi. We're going to go on Zitzin. Zitzin. Now we're going to go in Orin. Logi, please. No comments for like reps, please. Sorry. It's okay. After that, we're going to go on Muscadet. We don't have one exec. There are very few DPS ships. After that, we're going to go on for Kaldari Daddy. After that, we're going to go on at Rukia. After that, we're going to go on Odyssey. Well, she's down. Okay, you did a great job. You kept us going for a long time here. I think we should be able to clear up this fight now. And go on Averta. And go on Langhard. Just swinging in here for like the hard burn, by the way, guys. We're just going to win, so heat your guns now. Heat your guns, heat your guns. After this, we're going to go for the... Where's the slap near? There's, there's Jebby. We'll go for Jebby after this. You still have three semis in the field. That's fine. We should have damps on all of them, so... Break them. I think we can. You guns a cycle here, guys. Come on, come on. Good. Now we go on Ziak.
You're doing great, guys. We'll go on Ma. Yoti has me locked. Get ready for that broadcaster. This is a real close fight. It's actually going really down to the wire, but I think we're going to win just by numbers. Didn't we have less people? No, I think we had roughly equal. Come on. Not in him. And next to no logi and they were just hero surviving us. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, now Ma, now Ma, now Ma. Was a safe time to put some good fights in locals. <laughs> Yeehaw! If you want, grid. Nicely like done, gentlemen. Script. Really worried we were going to lose that one there for a second. Loot up the field, folks. Loot up the field. Okay, your drones in. Loot up the field. So unfortunately, because this was an NPSI versus an NPSI fleet, meaning that we have a bunch of NPC corps like Sebestor on both sides of the battle, it's relatively hard for us to make a proper accurate battle report of this fight. But if we take what Z-Kill gives us at face value, I lost around 600 million isk and killed 2 billion isk, which is a pretty good result by my opinion. However, what I think this fight really shows is just how important E-War can be to the way a fight plays out. As you saw throughout this fight, Gertie wasn't willing to use his range advantage and his speed advantage with his MWD to pull off to a larger range where he would have been able to better track me. And this is because if he did so, there was every chance I could have swapped to range damps on his DPS locking them out of the fight until he spends even more capacitor burning in to get back within range. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and useful, and if there's a doctrine, be it a T1 cruiser doctrine or a battle cruiser doctrine, or maybe even a hack doctrine that you want to see me explore in a video like this, please let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely give it some consideration. Until next time though, have fun and as always, fly smart.